How's it going everybody? Well, I want to talk a little bit today about uh, setting your SWRs, your standing wave ratio, on your CB radio setup. I get quite a few people over the past months that have asked me, you know, I have a, a radio XYZ brand on this antenna, it'll receive fine, but I can't transmit. And whenever you lose the transmit side of a radio, generally it's going to be attributed to a poor standing wave ratio, or SWR. Now an SWR is a reading that you take on a meter, like this dozy meter you're looking at right now, and what it does is it lets you know how efficiently your radio is getting out through your antenna. Now you can see on here, this right here is the SWR scale, the center scale here that has the red right here, and the red starts at the number three. Any reading that you would get up in this red is a quote unquote a danger area. You have a very high probability over time, depending on how much power you're pushing, of burning up the transmit side of your radio. So the idea is, is to adjust your radio to your antenna and tune it via your antenna. Sometimes you can change your SWR by changing the length of your coaxial runs, the coax that connects your antenna to your radio. But typically you're going to be doing this through the antenna itself and antenna location. Now this is going to vary depending on whether you're putting it on a mobile rig or you're putting it up in your house. But practically all antennas, decent antennas, are going to have a way to try and tune them. Now, the more power that you put out through a radio and the worse your SWRs are, the faster you potentially are going to burn up the transmit side of your radio. If you're running a stock radio, you're putting out 3-4 watts, something like that, it, it will take a longer period of time depending on your antenna. Now let me say this right now, there are CB antennas out there that you can buy that are similar looking to like a through the glass cellular telephone antenna. Those type of antennas you want to stay away from, those antennas are absolute garbage. That's the quickest and best way to burn up your radio is to try and use it through a piece of crap antenna. You do not want to do that. You know, there's a lot of antennas out on the market. I'm primarily speaking to mobile radios right now. That's probably what the vast majority of people would be looking at doing. But uh, you want to do a little research. I mean, I have my opinions. I have not been real heavy, heavy into radio for three or four years. I mean, I still have all my equipment. I still kind of dabble in it some, but I'm not near as hot and heavy into it as I was 10 years ago. Um, so, you know, the antenna market and stuff has probably been ever-changing. I can just tell you what I've used, what I've had good luck with. And for a, a simple install on a metal vehicle that isn't going to work on a fiberglass vehicle, you know, but a magnet mount antenna, you put it up on the roof of your vehicle or maybe down on the trunk lid. But uh, I've always had good luck with the Wilson, like a Wilson 1000 or a Wilson 5000 magnetic mount antenna. I'm not saying that they are the top of the line antenna, but they are a good, decent antenna. I've, I've had no problems with them. They have a very strong magnet on them. They're not going to blow off your rig. Uh, years ago, like back in the mid-90s, I had a Radio Shack magnet mount and the thing blew off my truck going down the interstate. The magnet on it was very weak. If you look for a Wilson uh, magnet mount, they're easy to install. You ain't got to drill no holes. Most cars don't have a place to, you know, to mount an antenna mount like on a toolbox on a truck or, or something like that. So a magnet mount is, is really the most convenient method to use. But the standing wave ratio, trying to get back on topic here, is extremely important. And I don't think a lot of people even know what it is or that it even exists. 
Most people probably go, they'll pick up an antenna, pick up a radio, stick it in their vehicle, power it up, and start going to town without even checking your standing wave. So I'm going to show you how to do it. It's a very simple process. I'm going to be using this dozy meter right here. Um, this meter is not extremely, extremely expensive. It's a TC4002 PSW. It has a lot of different features. It has a high power capability. If you're, you know, running uh, legal wattage, it doesn't matter. But this does have just a lot of, a lot of nice features to it. Just like anything, just like with firearms or anything else, you're gonna, there's gonna be a click. There's gonna be people that say that XYZ meter's not worth a crap. Blah, blah, blah. It's no different in radio. The stuff that a lot of people feel the stuff they have is the best and everything else is junk. <clears throat> but there are varying qualities of meters for radio. And there are very vastly different prices for meters for radio. Dozy meters for me have proven to be a good, decent meter, not super overly priced. But a lot of people complain about dozies because they do not show a high wattage output on somebody's radio setup. You'll have people that will say, you know, I have a Cobra 25 and my radio man got it to where now that thing is putting out 40 watts. Well, that's bullshit. I don't give a shit what anybody says. You're not going to get 40 watts out of a Cobra 25 radio without going in and putting in you know larger finals which will require a bigger power supply the whole nine yards my point is, is there's a lot of people especially radio men um, not a quality radio man but uh, his meter will be so tweaked and so fucked up inside that he can put a Cobra 25 on it and make it show whatever he wants you to see you know so whenever you do trust your radio, especially if you have an old vintage radio or something, or a very expensive modern day radio, you don't want to just let anybody and their brother get into it with their golden screwdriver. You want to try and, you know, ship it off to somebody or use somebody in your local area that you know has a reputation of being a quality radio guy. Okay. So on this, on this here, this is how you do it. I have my, I have a Cobra 2000 GTL base station sitting here. I've got it turned down. Obvious purposes, we've got a little DX running in. I'm on channel 35. What you want to do is, whenever you're going to check your SWR, you power everything up <clears throat> on your meter, whatever kind it is, it should have an SWR set feature on it. You want to key your microphone. Now see how that pegged way over the other? Right here, there's a set mark. And there will be a calibration knob on your meter where you'll key it. You can turn this down. I want to turn that up real close to the set mark. Okay, that's just a little past it. Right there. So at my power output, <clears throat> at my current power output, I have calibrated this meter at my power output to give me an SWR reading on my setup, okay? So at this point, I won't touch anything else. I'll just flip this over to SWR, key the microphone, and you can see how that needle just barely moves. Now, if my SWR was bad, or let's say you didn't even have an antenna hooked up at all, that meter, that needle right there is going to slam over here. If you didn't have an antenna hooked up, that thing's just going to peg out. So that could indicate that you have a bad piece of coax, which is probably what it is. Because coaxial cables can go bad. They'll get a cross connection in them. The cable will break. It's not often, but I mean, that kind of stuff can happen. If you do a set, and then you check your SWR, and you key your microphone, and that thing goes way over, you need to stop and check your system. Okay. Now, right now I'm going through my vertical antenna. I have an Anton, Antron 99 on vertical, and I have a Joe Gun 4 Element V beam. Also, I'm going to flip it over to the beam.
a little higher. Antennas will read a little different. If you've got it real close to that, you're going to be fine. You do, uh, it doesn't have to be exact. You don't want your SWR set to be over here, or you don't want your needle slamming over to the right because you don't know just how far off it is. So as long as it's just, it's just teetering right in this area, you're going to be fine. But you can see both of my antennas have got a very... Whoops, let me do that. I meant to put this one. A very low SWR. And that's what you want. Now, <clears throat> there'll be arguments on this too. Ideally, you want your SWR to be absolutely as low as you can get it. A 1.5, they call it a 1.5 to 1, 1.5 to 0. People use different terms. But at this 1.5 mark, if your SWR is at that or lower, <clears throat> you're going to be okay. Now, if you happen to be somebody that's out pushing a lot of power, you want to be careful. The more power you push, the more likelihood you're going to have of having a problem burning something up, the higher your SWR is. But if you're just running stock power, stock radio, <clears throat> excuse me, and you're at 1.5 or less, that's considered to be okay. Two to one, or up to two, other people will say, eh, you're not going to hurt anything, but, boy, that's not ideal at all. Well, I agree. I would not personally want to run over a 1.5, even stock. I just wouldn't want to do it. The higher that your SWR gets, the more power you are losing coming out of your radio. So, if you, you, if you have a flat match right here, and you're putting out 4 watts, you key your mic, you got a flat match, you have a quality antenna, you should be putting your, your full 4 watts should be going out your antenna. As your SWR starts to climb, well, what that's doing is, is it's taking power that should be going out your radio, out your antenna, and it's feeding some of that power back into your radio. Okay, and that in turn is what will cause the transmit side of a radio to go out. Because you start feeding too much power back into the transmit side, it doesn't like that. And over time, it will take that circuit out. Okay, so like I say, my, my biggest thing with this was just to try and explain in layman's terms, <coughs> excuse me, what your standing wave is, what it does and how you can check it. Um, whenever you're doing an antenna adjustment, there's a, there is a, uh, a way to know which way to go with your antenna. If your SWR, uh, here, let me do this. If your SWR is better, as in lower on the scale, on a higher channel, let's say channel 40. Let's say that you have a 1.1 1, a 1 .1 not a 1.5, but a 1.1 on channel 40. And you go down to channel 1, and you check it, and you have a 1.6. Okay. Your SWR was better on your higher frequency on channel 40. So to start getting your match, what you'd want to do is you want to increase the length of your antenna. Okay. Any decent antenna is going to have a way to adjust that. On a mobile antenna, it will have a couple of little Allen screws or one Allen screw that you'll loosen up. You'll take your stainless steel stinger and you'll just raise it up ever so much. No more than like a quarter inch at a time. Tighten it back down, run through, reset, and then check. And let's say now you've raised it up just a little bit. And let's say now on channel 40, you're at a 1.3. <clears throat> and channel 1, you're at a 1.4. So, channel 40, it climbed, but channel 1 came down. And that's when you get into what they call the, the standing wave ratio, or SWR curve. Because it's all frequency specific. Your antenna that you buy, you have to have an antenna that's designed for 27 megahertz, or CB radio frequency. You cannot take just any old antenna and throw it on there that came off of a, of a high frequency, an HF rig, or or whatever. It needs to be designed for 27 megahertz, i.e. or the CB radio frequency band. So you start getting those, you get those closer. 
the ideal thing is on channel 20, which is in the middle of the band between channel 1 and channel 40, you want channel 20 to be your lowest SWR reading. Then it should get that curve. Let's just say channel 1 is a 1.4, channel 20 is a 1.2, channel 40 is a 1.4. You get the idea. So, uh, different antennas, they, they have got a different broadbanding capability. Broadband it means it's a very broad antenna. It will keep a low SWR across a wider frequency range. There are some antennas that are not like that. Okay, you can do your research. Try and talk to some uh, some people that know, some people that are more, you know, up on the modern antennas and stuff. But it needs to you need to try and do, you know somebody that's this reputable, not just some guy fixing radios at a truck stop out the back of his truck. Unless you can talk to other people that you trust and say, yeah, the guy does do good work. He's not just a an idiot with a golden screwdriver. So anyway, that's that's really about it. I mean, the system is the same for um, a base antenna. I mean, uh, how you would adjust SWR on a beam is is different, but that's just something that you'd have to look up. I mean, I could sit here for stinking five hours trying to explain all the different ways, but mobile applications is is pretty straightforward, and uh, you just the bottom line is you just want to make sure you have a decent meter. And you want to make sure that you check your SWRs, get yourself a decent antenna. I mean, your antenna is 80 to 90% of your setup. Uh, I said this in a previous video. You can have a $500 mobile radio. And if you got it going through a $30 antenna, you're going to have a $30 quality output. So, you know, you'd be much better money, better spent to buy an $80 radio and spend 80 100 120 dollars on a good quality antenna okay so i hope that explains some things you know about you know the standing wave ratio and just how important it is if you do not have a good swr you won't be talking long but you can listen your swr makes no difference until you key that microphone if you're somebody that just likes to listen it doesn't really matter as far as i know and if it does, it's negligible. You're not going to burn up your radio. Okay. So anyway, that's about it. I hope that that uh, explains some things to people. And uh, good luck with all your all the CBN. There's a lot of good DX going on these days. Let's see what we got. See, right there, right there, that guy was just in Dallas, Texas. And I'm sitting up in Wyoming. You know, for all intents and purposes, I could get on and, and you know, try and contact him. There's no guarantees I will. But uh, that's when the skip's rolling in. That's what it's all about for me. It's not talking to the guy down the street. It's for trying to talk all over the country and all over the world, just depending on how the skip, the DX is, is running. Anyway, enough Jack John. Hope you, hope you all enjoyed it. Talk to you later. We'll see you.